today. Plastic compounds and nuclear waste. What else the matter with the people on the planet? Have we all gone insane? The steam of industrial progress killing us so much. It's good. Day. It's you know. It's I, I think. We're all trying to figure out exactly what it is. I think uh, the concept of it was to sort of, well, the offspring already knew that they were going to be celebrating their smash, you know, 25th anniversary of that record. And uh, they wanted to recreate the Epitaph Summer Nationals that happened in 94. And we were part of that. Pennywise was on. Offspring were on, the Vandals were actually on, No Effects was on, Rancid was on, and it seemed like a pretty good idea. And and uh, and we put it together and threw it to our our booking agents, and they said, "Well, let's kind of go fishing a little bit and see what happens." And promoters said, "It sounds like a pretty good idea, like it might work." And we're kind of getting out here, and for lack of a better idea, it's sort of a grown-up warp tour. You know, I, I, I'm, me and my friends wouldn't likely go and stand in a parking lot now in the summer, but I'll come here and come and see my favorite bands. And I can know, I noticed that it's just a, di it's a different group of people that are like coming to these shows, mostly older. Uh, and they really, really like, you know, everything from, you know, in that gray race generator era. It seems to be that's like the big, what everybody wants to hear. So it's great. It's it's just weird. It's different. It's still too new. Fletcher drank beer out of a shoe yesterday. That was fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, there hasn't. I mean, we've only. I think we've only played four shows. Four or five. Did uh, Pittsburgh. Baltimore, uh, five shows, four, I think just four, fuck, I don't even, my brain doesn't work, so it's still too new, there hasn't really been anything, enough time for anything to happen yet. It's impossible, it's impossible, I'm making the set list and it's fucking impossible, and, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I, I am accepting that no one is going to be happy. I can, I, and, I, and I'll carry that. It's, ta it's, it's really hard, but, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to do things that are, on one hand, unique, that we haven't really played on our own. I'm trying to do things that People who only like The Offspring might go, oh, I've heard that song. And I'm trying to play songs that like Pennywise fans would go, fuck yeah, this is why I love this band. It's so, you know, getting to choose 17 songs out of a catalog of 300 plus is not easy. Um, so I just sort of, I write something every day. I write out, usually what I do is I, I write out 17 or 18 songs that I think, okay, we're gonna try these today. And then I start trying to put them in some sort of an order that makes sense. Today, today we're gonna do something different at the end because I was writing out little, like five little blocks and I realized that the last two blocks were, we weren't stopping. We were just blowing right through all the songs. So I said, well, fuck it. Now we just have four blocks. So <laughs> we'll see. Tonight's, tonight's special songs will include Big Bang, Skyscraper, uh, Supersonic, um, what else? Uh, no, that'll be tomorrow. Because Big Bang and those two songs are sort of interchangeable to me. And then, you know, in when you have 45 minutes and 17 songs, tonight was like, well, I want to play Struck a Nerve, so I'll play that. That'll be like the slow one, that and Digital Boy, and then we're done. And so that's kind of, that's what we'll do. I think more than anything, to me, uh, 
I can tell you that to Bad Religion as a band, they were incredibly important to Brett Gurowitz and they really drove him to write the majority of his beginning material and probably influenced him more than anyone else. To the band as a whole, you know, a band like the Ramones, we wouldn't be here without them. So when you say, what does that mean to you? It's just like, well, that's there. Without them, there's no us. And, that, and that's pretty much all you can really say about it. So put your hands between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye one part. Being from L.A., playing the Hollywood Palladium where I saw the clash in 79 was a big one. Playing the Roseland here where I knew a lot of bands played was a big one. Um, CBGB's when we first played here, and I... I don't know if Greg will remember this because we're sort of, I don't know why, we've just decided to start celebrating Suffer as an album because we're just like that. <laughs> hey, we're celebrating a record. It's called, But we were playing CBGB's the day that Suffer was released. So we were actually, uh, remember they had the record store next door to CBGB's? Well, we were loading in our gear. There was people standing around and two boxes of Suffer came from Epitaph to the record store and we took one of them, they were, you know, we opened it up and like, just giving them to people in the line, like, dude, check out on your record. So like, and you know, that nobody had ever heard of it. We were playing songs off it and no one had ever even heard Suffer. So the day the record came out, we were playing CBGBs. That's kind of, to me, that's sort of a big deal. I'm not working on anything. I'm just making kids. I make babies. <laughs> My man here can relate. Why not? Feels good. I got two. I got three. Unacceptable. Uh, that that pretty much that they can question everything. I think that that. Uh, if there were anything that we felt, it's that, you know, we don't have answers to anything. We just have a shitload of questions. And hopefully someone someday will go, oh, here's the answer to that problem that you're having with whatever it is that we seem to be having every day. So um, I guess what you're really hoping for is for people to leave and go out and look for answers. And if they don't find answers, just ask more questions. I think Greg has a couple of songs and Brett has an idea or two. I think there was there was a lot of talk about like, oh, this is going to happen. And then it's sort of like, well, we just got busy with this tour and other things get in the way. And, and so we've, you know, without without contractual obligations, like we don't ever have to do anything. We're not really ever under the gun to make a record. We just sort of do it when we want. And. I think we kind of thought like, well, we'll have a record out next year, but there wasn't any super fire under our asses to do it. That doesn't mean that come December we won't be in the studio because all of a sudden we've got 20 songs and we're ready to go. It just means that I think that there was a moment earlier this year where we had a plan, we're going to do this, and then that just kind of got a little fuzzy, but what doesn't? That's, what, that's how we are. We don't make plans. <laughs> Everybody needs to serve it in the final two. Never a true strategy.